You know, there's a story about a, uh, a new soldier who becomes a paratrooper. And he goes into the airplane for the first time and the, uh, the sergeant there that was sending them out of the plane says, just remember four things. One, when you jump out, you count to ten. Second, pull your ripcord. Third, if that ripcord doesn't work and that parachute doesn't open, pull the emergency ripcord. And fourth, there will be a truck waiting for you on the ground to take you uh, back to the base. So all the men start peeling out of the airplane, jumping out, and they're going down. So the first para paratrooper in his first dive, he, he says, okay, the four things i got to remember. He says, first, I count to ten. He's like, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to ten. And then he pulls his ripcord, and it doesn't open. He says, okay, the third thing. But it pull the, the emergency, he pulls the emergency ripcord. Nothing opens up. And he says, just my luck, the truck probably won't even be down there either. <laughs> you know, sometimes our expectations that we have for things to happen are completely outside the realm of what is a normal thought, what is a normal expectation. And today, we hear this Gospel reading about expecting something without any faith behind it. We hear the man say to Jesus, if you can do this. And then Jesus says, I can do anything, is in short what He says. But he also, Jesus also encounters His disciples who were presented this little boy and they couldn't cast him out either. So they were expecting something without faith behind it. You know, many times in our lives, we are so trodden down and we all claim to have illness and fatigue. In other words, we're sick and we're tired of doing something. And we're trodden down, we're out of faith, we're running empty, but yet we still expect. Sometimes we expect things without knowledge. Sometimes we expect things without faith. And sometimes we expect things without even giving gratitude afterwards. So we see that the disciples who were following Christ for three years, three solid years, every single day for three years. And we know that this is towards the end of His ministry because at the end of Jesus' ministry, He starts mentioning about how He's going to be killed. And He says that to His disciples at the end. So we know that this is at the tail end of the three-year ministry. And what does Christ set as the example for the disciples? Fasting, prayer, faith, trust, obedience, and all those things that Christ shows them. He raises people from the dead. He heals the lepers. He cleanses people. He forgives sins. He heals the, the lame and the paralyzed. He teaches day and night. And His disciples look and they say, in private, because they didn't want to be embarrassed. Why, why couldn't we do this? And we hear in the beginning of the story, Christ say, how long am I supposed to put up with this garbage? Is really what He says. How long am I supposed to listen to the fact that I've been teaching you day in, day out, and you still don't get it? And that's what we see with the disciples. He's so clear. And Christ says, this kind you can, you can only heal if you're rooted in the faith. And how does Christ consider being rooted in the faith? By prayer and fasting. His two examples that He gave to His disciples. He said, I'm going to pray. Stay awake. Be vigilant. He comes back. They're sleeping. He wakes them up and says, I'm going back to pray. Stay. Be vigilant. So no one um, gets us and, and takes us away to imprison us. He comes back again. They're sleeping again. And He says to them, how many times can I, can't you stay awake for even an hour? And you know, it's very interesting that people will stay awake through a four hour movie that stinks. But how many times have I asked little children, even, and even adults, how are your prayers going at night? And they say, well, you know, I start saying my prayers and I say the Lord's Prayer and I, I say, Our Father who art in heaven, about 62 times because I'm falling asleep as I'm saying it and I'm drifting off, and the Our Father turns into this uh, you know, mumbo-jumbo of words, and I can't even stay awake. Because, for some reason, that's one of the devil's little tools to distract us, to make us fall away, to
to make the things that God wants us to do just a little more difficult, even though it's very simple. You know, it's very interesting standing up here and looking out. You know, I, I sometimes enjoy the fact, and, and I remember my first sermon, and I've recalled this before, where I gave my first sermon as a priest, and there was a man sitting right in the front, and he was sound asleep. And I kept saying, ah, da, 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 like that, and he wouldn't wake up. And I was wondering, what does it take to wake a person up to hear the Word of God? And I walked back in, and, and Father Nick Jonas at uh, St. Constantine Helen, he's like, Father, that was a great sermon. And I, I just had my head down. I, I couldn't wake him up. I couldn't get that guy to wake up. But there's nothing different about today from 2,000 years ago. Christ could not wake his disciples up out of disbelief, out of lack of trust. Sometimes we even have that in our own families. We see what our spouse is doing or our, our parents or whatever, and we look at it and we say, well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll listen, maybe I won't listen. But we have to look together as, as families of God, as a community of God, and say, where are we headed? What are we trying to do? Are we here in name only? Are we just listening until we get tired and then we fall away? Or are we really awake and trying? You know, sometimes people say that failure is the, um, is the reason that we don't try things again. And, you know, there's a very interesting um, story about this coach. He was a coach in a professional football team. And at the beginning of his coaching career, he gets two envelopes from the owner of the team. And he says, at the end of the first season, if you have a bad season, you open the first envelope. At the end of the second season, if you're having a bad season, open the second envelope. So he starts out the season, he's not doing well at all. The team is just failing miserably. So he, at the end of the season, he opens the envelope and it says, in front of the press and to everyone you know, blame the first coach for all the problems you had this year. So he puts the envelope aside and he does his press releases. He blames the old coach. The old coach didn't do this, he didn't do that, he didn't do that. He gets to the end of the second season, he's still having a terrible season. So he figures, I'll open up the second one, see who I can blame that time. So he opens up the envelope and he reads it and it says, prepare two more envelopes. In other words, you're done. And I think that sometimes in our lives, we immediately shut ourselves off from being able to, to have faith, from being able to trust in God, from being able to be the miracle workers as the disciples were called to be, from that person who came to them. And he said, you know Christ. You've been with Him. Here's my son. He's possessed. He's got problems. He's got seizures. You want to call it possession. You want to call it mental illness. Whatever. He's got a problem. I know that you know Christ, so come in and fix Him like I know you can do. Then, what happens? The disciples cannot do it. So then the man comes to Christ and he says, if you can. So immediately the doubt in God is set by the stage of the disbelief of the disciples. Let me say that again in a different way. People start doubting God when they look at us and they say, we're not representing God well. When they say, you know what? You can't do it. You can't pray. You can't keep your temper. You can't act the same 365 days a year. What kind of God are you following? And then they look at God and say, well, God, if you can do it, fine. And God says, and Christ says in the story, if I can, who are you talking to? But then his representatives, the disciples, go back and they say, well, we don't quite get it. And you know what? I think even 2,000 years later, we as Orthodox Christians don't quite get it. We're baptized, we're chrismated, we receive the sacraments. We have the ability to make miracles in other people's lives. There's no excuse why we're not. We can speak God's truth, we can do His work, we can, if we aim a person, like I say so many times, one degree in a different direction is they're in their life, where, they're, where they will end up will be completely different from where they have missteered themselves. So today, the fourth Sunday in Lent, the past halfway point, calls us to say, believe in God, 
follow Him, be the same every day. Be what God wants you to be. And don't make excuses and don't say you don't know because the disciples had three years and how many years have we had? 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 as Orthodox Christians. And we know the end of the story too. The disciples had no idea what was going to happen to Christ. In fact, when He was crucified, they all just looked down and said, well, we thought He was going to be the one. But we know the end of the story. We cheated. We know that He came back from the dead. We know that He heals. We know that He offers eternal life. We know about Pentecost. We know about the Ascension. We know about all those things. So why aren't we doing more? Why aren't we making the miracles in other people's lives when they come to us and say, here's what I need, and you are representatives of God? Everyone comes to another person at some point in their life and says, I need something from you, from your relationship with God. Everybody does. Whether it's your kids saying, I'm hurting. Whether it's a spouse that's, that's going through a difficult time or a parent or whatever. Everyone comes to another person looking to draw from the spiritual well of that person. And today's Gospel reading reminds us that we cannot be empty because God, Christ, through His example, tells us how to fill ourselves up, to be prepared, and be the same each and every day. So don't expect anything from God without faith. But have the faith first, and all the things will be just given to you. You don't have to ask God when you're right next to Him, because He knows. He knows who you are inside. And sometimes you even know that with your family members. You can see them, and you see a particular look on their face or something, and you know, you can feel it inside, what they need. Maybe it's a hug. Maybe it's a kind word. Maybe it's food. Something. You can sense it. So if you're close to God, He knows. He can sense what you need, and He can help you. And likewise, each other, as we get closer to God, we get closer to one another, and we can sense the needs of each other too. I pray that you don't say to God, why couldn't we do this at the end of your life? Why couldn't I heal? Why couldn't I direct somebody? Why couldn't I do that? Because we have all the tools. We have the Holy Spirit. We have Pentecost. We have our Orthodox life. And we know the end of the story so that we can do all these great things in Christ's name. Amen.